Hi folks, in this lesson we're going to see how we can use the Angular CLI to generate a material table component. So far in this course we've used the CLI to create a navigation component and a dashboard component. Unlike these two previous components however, the table is a component in its own right rather than a collection of different individual components. Using the CLI to generate material components like this is a new feature of Angular 6 called schematics which are a way to extend the Angular CLI in order to have it create new files for you. There are only three schematics for Material at present, the two we've looked at so far, and the table. The reason why there is a schematic for the table component is because it can be a complicated component to set up compared to some of the others. But the great thing about this schematic is that it literally gives us everything. We get the table with sorting and pagination enabled, and even some fake data and a data model to get us started. Let's take a look. We can create a table using this command. Again, it's a similar command that we've used before. And again, it gives us a new directory in the project containing the files that make up the component and adds the relevant components into our own application module. So we get an extra file this time, we get this table hyphen data source TypeScript file. So we get an interface here for a table item object and that has name and ID properties. And we get some example data here. It's the periodic table of elements, or at least the first 20 of them. And there's also some behavior in this file as well. Let's scroll down a bit. So we can see that there is a table data source class here, which extends the more basic generic data source class. And we get some stuff for the pagination and sorting. So there are classes for these, mat paginator and mat sort. We get a method to connect to the data source and a method, an empty method called disconnect, which if we were using observables to connect to a remote data source, we might want to unsubscribe from those observables in here. We're not going to do that, so this method will remain empty. And there are also some functions here to support the paging and the sorting. And we get a simple sort comparator as well, right down at the bottom there. So we get quite a lot of default behavior and data in this file. And let's take a look now at the template for the table component. So this is relatively straightforward, but it does contain a number of things that we haven't seen so far in the course and which you might not be familiar with, depending on your level of experience with Angular itself. So the table component is built using a mat hyphen table custom element, and it connects to the data source using the data source input property. And it also has sorting enabled with the mat sort directive and the area label is is set to elements, which may or may not be descriptive enough. So inside the table, then we specify our columns for the table. And we do that using ng hyphen container elements, which are angular custom elements. They're nothing to do with angular material, but the table does need to make use of them. So each column has this mat column def directive, and that specifies which property the column is linked to. And in this case, it's the ID for the first column and the name for the second column. And we saw these in the interface for the data source when we looked at the data source just a moment ago. So that's these guys here. So then inside each container for each column, we have a mat hyphen header cell and a mat cell. By default, each of these are sortable. So we can see that with the mat hyphen sort hyphen header directive and each cell is linked to each object in the data using the mat cell def directive on the cell. And that acts a bit like an ng4. So those are both of the columns. And we then need to specify a header row. So we do that using the mat hyphen header hyphen row. And that is linked to the displayed columns property. And that's in the class file for the table. We'll look at that in just a moment. And then we can use the mat hyphen row element and that links to the previously defined columns. And again, that uses a structural directive, a bit like an ng4, and that's mat row def. 
And then after the table, there is this mat hyphen paginator element, and that is used to add pagination to the table. And that has a number of properties set to it already. So we specify the length, and that is the length of the data in the data source. We start off on page zero, that's specified using the page index input property. And we can also specify how many items there are on each page. So by default, there are 50. And we get this page size options property, and that will add something to the UI that allows the user to just select how many items they want displayed at once. So let's take a quick look at the component class now. So this brings together the paginator and the sorter as view child objects, and it brings in the data source as well. And we can specify which columns are displayed using displayed columns here. And in the ng on init, it just creates a new instance of the table data source and passes in the paginator and sorter. It's pretty basic stuff. We've got the same issue with the selector here. So let's fix that while we're here. And now as before, in order to actually use our new table component, we will need to add it to another component's template. So let's just add it to the first box in the dashboard that we added in the last lesson. So we don't want to add this to every single card in the dashboard and the cards are built using this ng4 in the mat grid tile element. So let's just add a counter reference to this loop. And we can do that using the built in index and we just associate that to a template reference variable called i. So now we can add our table only if we are creating the very first tile. So let's just add an if condition to the mat hyphen card element as well. And now we get the table and the rest of the cards should appear exactly as they did previously. So by default, the table doesn't sit too well in the dashboard, but it's fine. We can fix that really easily. So let's put the number of rows per page for the table down, and that will allow it to fit into the same sized row that we're using. So the row height is specified as part of the grid list here. We know that's 350 pixels. So back in the template for the table, let's change the page size. It's currently set to 50. So let's knock that down to about four. And we don't want the user to change that because if they set it back to 50 or 100, it's just going to completely break the view again. So let's get rid of this page size options directive down here. And let's take a look in the browser again. And now we can see that the table fits in there much better. We can see the title row of the table now, and we can see the pagination. We can see how many items there are per page and which items we're actually viewing. So the sorting should all work by default. We don't have to do anything to hook that up. And we should be able to navigate through the pages using the paginator here. All of this works out of the box. We didn't need to do any configuration except really to fix the display. And if we weren't displaying the table inside the dashboard, we wouldn't have even needed to do that. So let's just fix some styling to make the table the full width of the dashboard tile rather than just kind of floating in the middle here. So we also get a dashboard CSS file. And we just want to change that like we did last time. Let's make that a SAS file instead. Now let's add some basic styling for the app hyphen table custom elements. We need to add the styles to the dashboard CSS file rather than the table CSS file. And that's just because of how style encapsulation works in Angular. So the table looks a bit better now. So we can see that the drop shadow around the table is much darker than it is around the other cards. So we can fix that pretty easily as well. In the table component here, we can see this mat hyphen elevation hyphen Z8 class and mat hyphen elevation 
hyphen Z is used to set the Z index of components. And eight is quite high. So let's just knock that down to one. And that kind of looks a bit better now. If you're a designer, that probably looks horrendous, but it's within the bounds of acceptance in my opinion. Nevertheless, you can fix that easily by adding the same elevation class to the cards in the dashboard template as well. And the drop shadow should now be the same for the table and the cards. So one thing to note about the table that the CLI has kindly generated for us is that it uses a flex based display. The material table component also has a regular display mode where proper HTML table elements are used. And these have the material table directives applied to them. But in this case, it is generated with the directive based elements like mat hyphen table instead. So this is just something to note. We're not going to change that at all. So now that we've seen the table in action, let's go back to the data source. So let's see how we can customize the table a little. We've already taken away the page size selector. So displaying how many rows there are on each page seems a bit pointless because we can easily see that there are four rows per page. So let's remove this using one of the paginator components properties. So down at the bottom here in the mat hyphen paginator, there's an input property called hide page size. So let's add that. And now that we've added that, we can see that one of the display elements has been removed. And now we just see the total number of pages and how many items are displayed on the current page. So not how many items, but which items. So we can see that items one to four are displayed. And now it's items five to eight and so on and so forth. So now let's see what we need to do if we want to add another column to the table. It's a straightforward process, but there are a number of steps. So first of all, let's go to the data source and update the example data. And we just need to add a new property to each object to do that. So let's add a column for the atomic weights of each element in the periodic table. And we get some red underlining there because according to the interface that we're using, it should only have name and ID properties. And now we've added a weight property. So that should be all we need to do in this file. Let's save that. And now we need to go to the template and add a new column definition there. It's pretty similar to the other columns. It's just mapped to the new column property. So lastly, we just need to update the display columns array in the table component class. So let's go back to the browser now. And we should see our new weight column. Perfect. So there's just one issue left at this point. The new weight column does have the mat hyphen sort hyphen header directive. And we see the icon here. But it doesn't actually work properly at this stage. And to fix that, we just need to update the sorting method in the data source. So we have this get sorted data function and there's a switch statement inside there and it has cases already for name and ID. So we just need to add a case now for the weight column. And it's very similar actually to the ID column because it's a number. So let's copy that. And we just need to update it for matching weight. So now we should find that the sorting works correctly now for the atomic weight. And that looks much better. So in this lesson, we saw how to create a data table with sorting and pagination built in using the Angular CLI. We looked at the template that gets generated as well as the class and data source. And we saw how to make changes to the table, like adding a new column of data to be displayed. The table component is still capable of much, much more. So do be sure to check out the API documentation to learn more. 
Thanks for watching.